Okay, so today we're diving into some seriously ambitious ideas uh, from these documents you've shared. Yeah. Outlining a plan for joyful, responsible abundance. Yes. And it sounds like it all starts with North Stradbrook Highland as a kind of blueprint. And it blends things like AI, sustainable living, right. and even a revitalized Live Aid series. Yeah, it's interesting how it connects all these seemingly different ideas. Yeah. You know, it's not just about tech or our sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's about how to weave them together in a way right. that creates a brighter future. Yeah, and I think right from the get-go, the scope of this is what grabs you. You're right. talking about taking what works on Stradbrook Island and eventually bringing it to a global scale. Absolutely. Um, and we've got to talk about this aura of intelligence. Yeah. It's like a personal digital twin powered by AI, right. but also tapping into spiritual concepts. Yeah. It's pretty wild, right? It definitely is. Um, it really pushes the boundaries of how we usually think about technology. You know, if you imagine a device that helps you visualize complex ideas or make decisions more clearly, right. or even allows you to connect with other people more deeply by sharing your inner world. Yeah. That's the kind of potential we're talking about here. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. The uh, the idea of visualizing my thoughts is a bit intimidating, Yeah, but also really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so before we get to carry it away with the future. Like Let's ground ourselves in the present. Sure. You've chosen North Stradbroke Island as a starting point. Right. What is it about this place that makes it right for this vision? Well, the documents highlight how the island could be completely self-sufficient. Okay. Um, for example, the sand isn't just sand. It's full of materials like quartz, ilmenite, rutile, right. all these things. Wow. Um, and we're talking solar panels, batteries, even spacecraft components. Wow. All from the island itself. So it's about utilizing local resources to their fullest potential. It's kind of like a closed loop system. Yes, exactly. They've even factored in hydroponics, aeroponics, and algae bioreactors for a self sustaining food system. Wow. Um, and 3D printing plays a role too, hmm. using local materials for building. That's a whole lot to unpack. Yeah. But I'm already seeing the bigger implications. Yeah. If this works, we're talking. Job creation, environmental protection, oh, no, a potential model for ANOI community yeah. facing resource challenges. It's really just the beginning. Yeah. And it all comes back to that aura of intelligence. Right. Um, it's really central to this whole plan, even for something as complex as facilitating a global vote on shared values. Okay. You've officially blown my mind. Okay. Global vote. How does that work? So think about the 40th anniversary of Live Aid in 2025. Okay. It wouldn't just be a concert. Right. It would be a global stage for this vote. Wow. Oh. And the aura plays a key role. Okay. Because it creates these immersive experiences. Right. For both physical and virtual attendees. Wow. So not only would they be able to experience the concert, right. but they'd also be able to engage in discussions and participate in this voting process. So it's about more than just watching a performance. It's yeah. about actively participating and shaping the future. Exactly. And to make it truly global and community driven. Yeah. Blockchain and a dedicated cryptocurrency called the GAJRA token come into play. Hold on. A dedicated cryptocurrency. Yeah. Tell me more about that. So think of it as a way to support the initiatives. Okay. People could use GAJRA tokens to contribute to projects, vote on proposals. Right and even earn rewards for positive actions within this community. Okay, so that's starting to sound like a whole new way of organizing society. It is. It's a big shift. We're talking financial systems, right. governance, even how we value individual contributions. Absolutely. It's right. pretty amazing. Yeah, and imagine taking those ideas yeah. of community engagement yeah. and applying them to something like democracy itself. You mean like voting in elections? It's not about replacing those systems. It's about adding another layer of engagement. Right. You know, especially for people who might feel, um, you know, left out of traditional politics. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But let's be realistic. A yeah. project this massive. Right. Even if it's starting small on Stradbroke Island. Yeah. It's going to require a ton of energy. Right. How are you planning to power this vision sustainably? Well, you've hit on a really crucial point. Yeah. The documents actually lay out a really detailed energy strategy. Okay. And it starts by kind of taking stock of the island's current power needs. Okay. And then it goes from there to figure out how to not only meet those needs sustainably, right. but also to generate a surplus of energy. So just how power hungry IS this vision. Right. So right now, the average daily power consumption on North Stradbrook Island. Okay. 
is about 35,000 kilowatt hours. Wow. So that's kind of our starting point. Okay. But as this vision becomes a reality yeah. with new technologies and industries and ways of living, right. you know, that demand is only going to increase. <laughs> that's a lot of juice. So it is. So how do you plan on keeping the lights on, sustainably speaking? Well, it starts by harnessing the Eiler's natural abundance. Okay. You know, particularly the sun and the ocean. Right. So we're talking solar panels on every rooftop, okay. a large scale solar farm, and even wave energy converters that can harness the power of the tides. So you're turning the island itself into a giant sustainable power plant. Exactly. That's pretty wild. What happens when the sun isn't shining and the waves are calm? That is a great question. And that's where energy storage comes in. Okay. The plan talks about implementing large scale battery storage systems. Okay. To make sure that there's a consistent energy supply no matter what the weather is doing. So no blackouts, even with all this fancy tech running? Exactly. That's great. And here's the best part. Okay. The goal is to actually generate more energy than the island needs. Wow. And that surplus could then be exported to the mainland. Okay. Making North Stradbroke a net exporter of clean energy. That's amazing. It's pretty remarkable. It almost sounds too good to be true. It does, but they've really thought this through. That's great. Yeah. What about the jobs that might be lost as industries become more automated? Yeah. That's a concern that I think a lot of people have about this type of technological advancement. It's a valid concern, and it's one that the documents address directly. Okay. The plan really emphasizes creating new job opportunities. Okay. Um, and focusing on areas like robotics and AI development and data analysis. Right. All of those fields that will actually be boosted by this transformation. So it's not about robots taking over. Right. It's about humans and robots working together, each playing to their strengths. Exactly. And as these new industries emerge, yeah. education and retraining programs right. would be essential to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to thrive in this new landscape. It's about making sure that progress benefits everyone. Absolutely. Not just a select few. It's about creating a future where technology enhances our lives. Right. Not displaces us from them. Yeah. And speaking of enhancing our lives, let's talk about getting around. Sure. This is an island after all. Right. How does sustainable transportation fit into this vision? So the documents lay out a plan for what they call an integrated mobility network. Okay. And the idea is to combine the best of what we have now yeah. with the potential of future tech. Okay. So we're talking electric vehicles, yep. self-driving cars, even drones playing a role. Okay. I am all about electric vehicles. Yes. But autonomous vehicles and and the drones, yeah. that feels very futuristic. I know it's very cutting edge, but think about it. Yeah. North Stradbroke Island relies heavily on tourism. Yeah. Imagine a fleet of self-driving shuttles okay. quietly and efficiently moving people around the island. Right. Re reducing traffic congestion. Yeah. Making transportation more accessible for everyone. I can get behind that. Yeah. I'm already picturing myself sipping a smoothie, enjoying the view without the stress of driving. Right. But what about the drones? Yeah. I can't imagine those being used for much more than aerial photography. So think beyond just pictures. Okay. Drones could be used for package delivery, okay. transporting medical supplies, right. even assisting with search and rescue operations, Wow! all while minimizing the environmental impact of traditional transportation methods. So it's like taking the concept of a smart city yeah. and applying it to an island setting. Exactly. It's about creating a system that's efficient, convenient, and sustainable, Right. whether you're a resident or a visitor. This is a side of North Stradbrook I never knew existed. Right. There's so much natural beauty, yeah. but also this incredible potential for innovation. It's amazing. You even talk about the island becoming a hub for space research and exploration. I know it sounds surprising. Yeah. But the documents suggest some pretty compelling reasons why this is a perfect location. Okay. So remember those rare earth elements we talked about? Yeah. The ones that are found in the island sand? Yeah. They're essential for space age technologies, right. all sorts of things. Wow. So instead of relying on global supply chains, yeah, which can be vulnerable to disruptions right. and often come with you know environmental concerns. Yeah, of course. You're talking about sourcing those materials locally. Okay. Right there on the island. Wow. And the vision goes beyond just mining. Okay. Imagine a research and development facility okay. on North Stradbrook Island attracting the brightest minds Wow! in aerospace engineering, material science, 
even astrophysics. So we're talking about building the future of space exploration. Yes. Right here on Earth using sustainably sourced materials. Exactly. That's wild. Mm -hmm. But what about those of us who keep our feet firmly planted on the ground? Sure. How does all of this space talk relate to everyday life on the island? That's a great question. And here's the thing. Yeah. The technologies that are developed for space yeah. often have applications here on Earth. Okay. So think about things like advanced materials, yeah. communication systems, yeah. even medical technologies. So the innovations sparked by this space research yeah. could end up benefiting us right here at home. Absolutely. It's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Yeah. And in doing so, discovering new solutions to the challenges that we face here on Earth. Okay, let's talk community for a minute. Sure. It's not just about technology and infrastructure, right? how do you plan on fostering a sense of connection and belonging on the island, yeah. especially with all of these new ideas kind of floating around? You've hit on a really crucial aspect. Yeah. The documents emphasize the importance of building a really strong sense of community. Okay. And one idea that stood out to me was establishing a community radio and television station oh, wow. on North Stradbroke Island. Like a hyper-local news channel dedicated solely to island life? It's more than just news. Oh, okay. Imagine residents sharing their stories, local musicians getting airtime, right. kids hosting shows about the island's ecosystem. Yeah. It'd be a platform for celebrating the island's unique culture and giving everyone a voice. That's a really great way to build community. Yeah. And it could be a really powerful tool for educating residents about the changes that are happening, Ex setting them excited about the future. Exactly. And it wouldn't just be limited to North Stradbroke. Okay. They've also discussed using this platform to connect with other communities in Southeast Queensland. Oh, wow. So fostering a sense of regional identity and collaboration. So it's like building a bridge between the island and the mainland. Yeah. Using media to share stories and celebrate successes. Absolutely. And even work together to address shared challenges. Exactly. It's about recognizing that we're all part of a larger ecosystem. Right. And that collaboration is key to creating a brighter future for everyone. I love that. Speaking of collaboration and connection, yes. the documents also mention something about a game yes. that's designed to connect communities across Southeast Queensland. That's right. Tell me more about that. This is where things get really interesting. Imagine a game that brings together people from North Stradbroke Island, Brisbane, the Gold Coast, even Ipswich. Right. All working together in a virtual world to address real world challenges. What kind of challenges are we talking? It could be anything. Okay. It could be designing sustainable solutions for urban planning. Okay. It could be collaborating on projects related to the 2032 Olympics, which the region is hosting. Right. The possibilities are really endless. So it's not just about escapism. Right. It's about using the power of games yes. to tackle real world issues and bring communities closer together. Exactly. And to make it even more engaging. Yeah. We're talking about incorporating augmented reality. Oh, wow. So allowing players to interact with their physical environment in new and exciting ways. Okay. Now you're speaking my language. Give me an example. Okay, so imagine using your phone or your tablet yeah. to discover virtual landmarks related to the Olympics. Okay. Or participate in community challenges that take you to different locations. Wow. Or even interact with virtual representations of players from other regions. So it's like Pokemon Go. Yes. But with a purpose. Exactly. I love that. I love how it blends the digital and physical worlds to create a more immersive and engaging experience. It's a fantastic example of how technology can be used to break down barriers yeah. and connect people in meaningful ways. Okay, this is all sounding really incredible. Yeah. But none of this happens without a dedicated and talented team. Right. Who are the key players that you need to make this vision a reality? Well, you're absolutely right. It takes a village. Yeah. Or in this case, a very diverse and talented team. Right. The documents talk about needing experts in a wide range of fields. Okay. From AI and blockchain to sustainable development and even entertainment. So we're not just talking tech wizards here. No, not at all. We're talking about a real melting pot of skills and perspectives. Exactly. We're talking AI specialists working alongside environmental scientists. Wow. Social philosophers brainstorming with game designers. Community managers collaborating with global event coordinators. It's about bringing together the best and brightest from all walks of life. Exactly. And that's where the magic really happens. Yeah. That's where the magic happens. But even with the best team in the world, right. navigating something this complex yeah. must require some serious guidance. It does. 
You've mentioned bringing together a global advisory board. Yeah. What's the thinking behind that? So it's about tapping into a, a wider pool of knowledge and experience. Okay. Think about the challenges that we're facing. Climate change, technological disruption, social inequality. Right. These are global issues Absolutely. that require global perspectives. So you're not just looking for local experts. No. You're looking for advisors from all over the world. Exactly. Mm. The documents talk about reaching out to experts in fields like technology, sustainability, economics, right. social justice, e even spirituality. Wow. People who can offer different perspectives and challenge assumptions right. and ensure that this vision is truly global in its reach and impact. So it's like creating a brain trust for the planet. That's a great way to put it. A group of wise owls yeah. who can offer guidance and support as this vision unfolds. It's about recognizing that we're all in this together. Yeah. And that by working together, yeah. by sharing our knowledge and our experiences, right. we can create a brighter future for everyone. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Okay. Funding. Yeah. This is a massive undertaking. It is. And even with the most passionate team and the wisest advisors. Right. None of it happens without the financial resources to back it up. You're absolutely right. Funding is essential. Yeah. And the documents outline a multi-pronged approach, okay. combining traditional funding sources uh, like grants and investments right. with more innovative approaches like crowdfunding and cryptocurrency. Okay. So break that down for me. Where's the money coming from? Okay. So first they're looking at grants from government agencies, mm. foundations, corporations right. that are aligned with their values. Makes sense. They'll yeah. also be targeting investments from in individuals and organizations that are passionate about sustainable development yeah. and technology and social justice. Right. All of the things that this project embodies. That makes sense. But what about crowdfunding? Yeah. How does that play into such a large scale vision? Crowdfunding is a really powerful way to engage the public. Yeah. To build a community of supporters who are financially invested in the project's success. Right. So imagine launching a campaign yeah. for a specific initiative, okay. like the community radio station right. or the sustainable food system. Yeah. People from all over the world could contribute. Right. Even mm -hmm. small amounts. Yeah. And be a part of something meaningful. It's like Kickstarter, but for a better world. Exactly. I love that. And then there's the cryptocurrency angle. Yes. Which is where things, I think, get really interesting. It does get interesting. Right. Yeah. We talked earlier about the GAJRA token. Yeah. It's like this whole other layer of the financial system that you're building. In a way, it is. Yeah. They're looking at creating what's called a decentralized autonomous organization. Okay. Or a DAO. A DAO. To manage some aspects of the project's finances and governance. Okay. You've officially lost me. DAO. That sounds a little intimidating. I know. It sounds very technical. Yeah. But think of it like this. Okay. It's a community-governed treasury. Okay. So people could use GAJRA tokens to contribute to specific projects. Right. Vote on proposals. Yeah. And even earn rewards for their contributions. So it's like giving everyone a voice. Exactly. Not just those with the deep pockets. It levels the playing field and empowers individuals to be active participants in shaping the future. I love that. But with all of this talk about global reach and impact, yeah. how do you plan on navigating different cultures and values? Right. Because what works in one part of the world might not fly in another. That's a really critical consideration. Yeah. And it's one that the documents address directly. Yeah. Oh, wait. They really emphasize the need for cultural sensitivity and respect for diverse perspectives. So it's not about imposing a one-size-fits-all solution on the world. Absolutely not. Okay. It's about listening and learning and adapting. Right. The plan actually suggests collaborating with cultural advisors. Okay. Engaging with local communities. Yeah. Incorporating diverse perspectives into every step of the process. So it's about making sure that joyful, responsible abundance. Yeah is relevant and resonant for everyone. Absolutely. No matter where they come from or what they believe in. Exactly. It's about building bridges, fostering understanding, right. creating a future where everyone feels seen, heard, and valued. I love that. Speaking of feeling seen and heard. Yes. Let's talk about food. <laughs> you mentioned this really fascinating idea of an in-home AI-powered auto farm. Yes. Is this what I think it is? Are you bringing the farm into our homes? We are. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. So. The plan really explores the potential of using AI and hydroponics and aquaponics, right. even insect farming, okay. to create a self-sufficient food system wow. within the home. 
Okay, so the insect farming part threw me for a loop. I know it sounds a little out there. Yeah. But insects are actually a highly sustainable and nutritious source of protein. Okay. So the plan kind of envisions a modular system. Okay. Where you could raise crickets, mealworms. Right. Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Alongside your herbs and your veggies. So it's like having a mini ecosystem in your kitchen. Exactly. You've got your plants growing in water. Yeah. You've got fish providing fertilizer. Yeah, yeah. You've even got insects contributing to the mix. That's right. It's closed loop sustainability at its finest. What would be the larger impact of something like this if it were to be adopted on a larger scale? I think it could revolutionize our relationship with food. Oh, okay. You know, empowering individuals to take control of their food supply. It could also reduce our reliance on industrial agriculture. Of course. Which has a massive environmental footprint. So it's about reclaiming our connection yeah. to the source of our sustenance. Exactly. Instead of sterile grocery store aisles, mm -hmm. we have these thriving mini farms in our homes. I love it. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so let's get back to, I guess, the star of the show. Okay. This aura of intelligence. Yeah. We've talked about its applications in education, voting, even entertainment. Right. But what exactly is it? Like, yep. what can our listener picture when they hear aura of intelligence? Okay, so picture this. Yeah. It's a wearable device. Uh, okay. Like a sleek pair of glasses or headphones. Okay. That projects information onto your field of vision. Wow. And responds okay. to your voice commands. Oh, wow. It's like having a personal AI assistant, a coach, and a companion all rolled into one. Okay, that sounds amazing, but also a little overwhelming. Yeah. How would something like that actually work in everyday life? Okay, so imagine you're learning a new language. Okay. And you have real-time translations appearing right before your eyes. Wow, that's wild. Or you're trying to understand a complex data set. Yeah. You could visualize it in 3D. Okay. Making it much easier to grasp these abstract concepts. Right. Or even receiving personalized health recommendations based on your biofeedback. It sounds like it could be incredibly empowering. Yeah. Like having access to a world of knowledge and experiences Absolutely. at your fingertips, or rather, I guess, at your eyeballs Thanks, uh, in this case. Um, and the possibilities go even further, right? They do. You talk about connecting with others in a more immersive way. That's, that's right. Sharing your thoughts and feelings, even sensory experiences, yeah. as if you were in the same room. It's incredible technology, mm. and it really does blur the lines between the physical and the digital. That's both fascinating and a little scary. It is. What about the ethical considerations of something this powerful? Yeah, you're right. It's not something to be taken lightly. Yeah. And the documents do address this directly. They emphasize the importance of data privacy. Of course. User consent and responsible development. Right. They even discuss the potential for misuse. Yeah. And the need for safeguards to prevent things like addiction or manipulation. So it's not just about building cool tech. No, it's about building it responsibly. Exactly. With a clear understanding of its potential impact on individuals and society as a whole. It's about empowering people, not controlling them. That makes a lot of sense. Uh -huh. Now, building something as complex and as sophisticated as the aura of intelligence, yeah, it's going to require a really rock-solid software foundation. It does. What's the plan there? So they're talking about creating a modular software platform. Okay. Kind of like an operating system for the Aura. Okay. That's both powerful and adaptable. So what does that mean in practice? It means that developers could create a wide range of applications okay. that are tailored to different needs and interests. So it's not just a one-size-fits-all solution. Exactly. It's about creating an ecosystem of possibilities. Okay. And it has to be incredibly user-friendly. Rest. Well, is. So that... Anyone, regardless of their technical skills, well, yeah. can easily navigate and utilize the aura. Exactly. It's about democratizing access to information and to experiences and to each other. Right. Because we don't want to create a technology that's only accessible to a select few. Exactly. Okay. So we've got this amazing device. Yes. But how do you get people excited about it? Nah. How do you convince the world that they need an aura of intelligence in their lives? That's where marketing and outreach come in. Of course. The documents suggest a multifaceted approach. Okay. Utilizing traditional advertising, targeted online campaigns, yeah. Yeah. even community engagement initiatives. How do you reach people who might be intimidated by new technology yeah. or those who are skeptical about its benefits? That's a great question. And I think the key is to make it tangible. Okay. So imagine interactive demonstrations okay. where people can actually try on the aura, okay. experience its capabilities firsthand, yeah. and see how it could enhance their lives. 
Yeah, I could definitely get behind that. There's yeah. nothing like a hands-on experience exactly. to really win people over. And right. it's not just about selling a product. Right. It's about starting a conversation. Absolutely. Addressing concerns. Building trust. And showing, not just telling how this technology can be a force for good in the world. Exactly. It's about empowering individuals to make informed decisions about their relationship with technology. It sounds like collaboration is really key to all of this. It's essential. You can't do it alone, right? No, you can't. So tell me about strategic partnerships that you're hoping to build. So collaboration is absolutely essential. Yeah. And the documents talk about reaching out to universities, tech companies, right. research institutions, even government agencies. Wow. You know, each partnership would bring something different to the table. Like what? Like, Give me some examples. Okay, so imagine collaborating with a university to study the aura's impact on learning okay. or healthcare, or partnering with a tech giant to access cutting edge hardware and software, right. or even working with government agencies to explore how the aura could be integrated into public services. So it's like creating a web of innovation with the aura at the center. Exactly, it's yeah. about leveraging the strengths of each partner right. to create something truly transformative. This is incredible. It's very exciting. But also a lot to manage. It is. How do you ensure that the aura of intelligence keeps pace right. with the ever evolving world of technology? Right, because it's not a one and done situation. Right. The plan really emphasizes a commitment to continuous research and development. So even after the Aura is launched? Yes. The work doesn't stop? Absolutely not. Imagine dedicated teams constantly working wow. to improve the Aura's performance, the user interface, yeah. even exploring new applications that we haven't even dreamed of yet. So it's about embracing a mindset of continuous improvement, exactly. always striving for better, yes. more intuitive, more beneficial technology. Technology is always evolving. Yeah. And the aura of intelligence needs to evolve alongside it. That makes a lot of sense. But before you unleash the aura upon the world, right. how do you plan on ironing out the kinks, yeah. ensuring a smooth user experience? So that's where pilot programs come in. Pilot programs. Okay, tell me more. So before a full-scale launch, right. they're proposing to test the aura in real-world settings. Okay. So... Schools, workplaces, community centers. Okay. Think of it as a beta test. Okay. But with real people providing feedback and helping to refine the technology. So it's like a dress rehearsal. Exactly. Before the big premiere. It allows them to gather valuable data. Right. Work out any bugs. Yeah. And ensure that the aura is ready for prime time. And it's a smart way, I think, to build buzz and excitement. Absolutely. To create a community of early adopters yeah. who are really invested in the Aura's success. It's about involving users in the development process. Right. Making them feel like they're a part of something bigger. Okay, let's talk about the ethical side of things with yeah. any new technology. Yeah. Especially one as powerful as the Aura. Right. There's always the potential for misuse. Yeah, of course. How do you address that? Well, it's something that they take very seriously. Okay. The documents actually talk about developing a really comprehensive set of guidelines. Okay and best practices for the ethical use of the Aura. What kind of guidelines are we talking about? We're talking about everything from data privacy and security mm. to accessibility and responsible use. Okay. They really want to make sure that the Aura is used for good. Right. Not for harm. Okay. So it's really about thinking through all the potential implications. What about potential negative impacts? Yeah. Like addiction or distraction or even social isolation? Those are all very valid concerns. Yeah. And the plan is to involve experts in ethics and technology and even psychology. Okay. To develop these guidelines. Right. And to make sure that they're really comprehensive and address those potential risks. It's about anticipating problems before they arise. Yes. And putting safeguards in place to protect users. Precisely the goal is to create technology that enhances our humanity. Right. Not diminishes yeah. it. Okay, so you've mentioned the potential for the aura to transform various industries. Yes. How do you plan on really exploring those possibilities? So the documents propose setting up these dedicated aura innovation labs. Okay. Expert speaker, each focusing on a specific field, right? Like healthcare, education, or entertainment. Right. So think of them like think tanks. Okay. That are dedicated to unlocking the aura's full potential. Okay. But in these very specific areas. Give me an example of what that might look like. 
Okay, so imagine a lab that's dedicated to developing aura applications for people with disabilities. Okay. Creating tools that allow them to navigate their surroundings more easily. Right. Or communicate more effectively. Wow. Or even control devices with their thoughts. That would be incredible. Amazing. Yeah, right? what about like an education lab? Exploring how the aura can revolutionize learning. Absolutely. Making it more engaging and accessible for all all students. Exactly. The possibilities are really limitless. Yeah. And these labs would provide the space and the resources and the expertise yeah. to really dive in and explore those possibilities. Okay. One last question before we move on. Yeah. You talked about the Aura's potential to break down language barriers Yes. with a universal translator. How realistic is that? Right. Is it truly possible to eliminate language barriers completely? It's a very ambitious goal. Yeah. And the technology is still in its early stages. Right. But the plan really does envision using advanced AI and natural language processing yeah. to create a real-time translator that works seamlessly with the aura. So I could be having a conversation with someone who speaks a completely different language. Yes. And the aura would just translate everything in real time? That's the idea. Wow. So you would hear them speaking in their native tongue but you would see subtitles appearing in your field of vision. Okay. Or even hear a translated voice in your ear. That would be game changing. It would be transformative. Think about the impact on travel, business, international relations. Absolutely. It's incredible. It really is. It's about fostering greater understanding and empathy and connection yeah. across cultures. The world desperately needs that right now. Absolutely. Okay, I have to admit, I'm starting to feel a bit overwhelmed yeah. by the sheer scale of this vision. The big vision. We've covered so much ground. We have. From sand to space, AI to algae. It's a lot. Let's bring it back down to earth for a minute, pun intended. Okay. And talk about relationships. Sure. How does something as personal as human connection fit into this vision yeah. of joyful, responsible abundance? Well, it's really a fundamental aspect of it. Okay. The documents really emphasize that technology should enhance, not replace human connection. Okay, but how does that work in practice? How can something as intangible as love and connection right. be fostered through technology? Well, imagine using the aura to share your thoughts and feelings and experiences with your partner. Okay. But in a much more direct and immersive way. Yeah. Or imagine experiencing a virtual reality adventure together. Right. Even if you're miles apart. So instead of technology isolating us, yeah. it can actually bring us closer together. Exactly. It's about using technology to bridge distances, yeah. to deepen empathy, right. and to strengthen our bonds with the people who matter most. That's a really beautiful thought. Yeah. But we also have to acknowledge the potential downsides here. Of course. Could this type of technology lead to an over-reliance on virtual connection, right. replacing genuine human interaction with something that's a bit more artificial. It's a really valid concern and it's one that the documents do acknowledge. Okay. You know, like any powerful tool. Yeah. It's all about how we use it. Right. And finding that balance. Yeah. Utilizing technology to enhance our relationships. Yeah. Not to replace them. It's about using technology to create more meaningful connections both online and offline. Exactly. It's about recognizing that technology is a tool. Right. And like any tool it can be used for good or for ill. It's up to us to choose wisely. I completely agree. This has been an incredible journey. It has. We've covered so much ground. So much. From the tiniest grains of sand to the vastness of space. The possibilities are truly endless. For our listener, who's hopefully now as fired up about this vision as we are. I hope so. What's the one thing you want them to take away from this deep dive? That joyful, responsible abundance isn't some far-off utopia. Yeah. It's a future that we can create together starting today. I love that. It's not about waiting for someone else to fix the world. That's right. It's about recognizing that we each have the power to make a difference. Ask yourself, what brings me joy? What small act of responsibility can I take today? How can I contribute to a more abundant future for myself and for others? Those are great questions to ponder. Yeah. And who knows? Yeah. That one small action, that spark of inspiration might just be the catalyst for something truly extraordinary. I have a feeling this is just the beginning. And that is a wrap on another deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep striving for a brighter future.